Hello, everybody. This is Christina Larson with Hello. Oh, I wasn't live yet. Hi. Hi, everybody. This is Christina Larson with Happy Hookers Detroit. And um, this is my first live post on Patreon. I just signed up on this lovely website. So I will make sure to put a link here so that you guys can check out my Patreon state, uh, page. I do have some cool videos up there, and I'm going to be uploading most of my stuff through there and through here. Um, today, I'm going to... Um, give you a little look at the sweatshop and I'm going to be making some curtains. I'm going to be doing a um, difficult lace tuck stitch for these. So hopefully it'll be pretty entertaining. Um, just a quick overview for you guys that don't know who I am. Yes, this is Happy Hookers Detroit. You can find me at www.hhdclothing.com. Most people don't want to type hookers into their uh, search engine there. So um, before I get too excited, I do do it with yarn. Yay. And for you crafters out there saying, hey, how is she a hooker if she's knitting? I use these vintage knitting machines. And as you can see, they are a bed of latch hooks. So yes, it is still, it is knitting, but it's still hooking. Holla at your hooker. Yay. So um, here today, I'm going to be working on my Brother 270 knitting machine that is also attached to a KE100 motor arm. I do have other machines. This is uh, Mr. Fancy Pants over here. Mr. Fancy Pants is a Brother 270. And I have a, oh, 970, sorry, 970. I have another bulky over here and a standard over there. And in the corner over here, if you can see him, Dennis. Oh, there he is. Dennis, Dennis Hopper king of the hooker sweatshop. He's my cute little dust bunny. He hangs out. He's a fun guy. He is made of Angora and one day maybe I could spin his hair into yarn. I don't know. And also Emma Gemma. Emma Gemma Dingo. I also have a dingo. Her name is Emma Gemma. Who's your baby? All right. So now that you met your family and you have met my uh, knitting machines, I guess I can go ahead, I'm just chasing the bunny, go ahead and get started here and showing you guys. So um, generally, let's see, is that a good angle? Generally, everybody starts with an E-wrap cast on. And an E-wrap cast on, you just, here, I'll come closer so you can see on this one. An E-wrap cast on, basically, you just do a slip knot. Do, do, do. And then you're going to go under the next needle, over it, and then back down. So you're just making an E all the way across the board. So, but for this, I'm actually going to be casting on every other stitch so that there's a space at the top that I can um, weave through the, um, the curtain rod. And then I'm gonna put a reinforcing layer underneath that so it's nice and thick through the weave through. And from there, I'm going to input a pattern, and um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult a pattern than what I'm used to. So that'll be fun. And hopefully I don't screw it up because this is live TV. Yay! So I'm going to take my uh, comb here, and I'm going to push back every other stitch, leaving both stitches um, on the ends. So... And I'm also going to be taking notes because this is curtains and I have to make multiples of them. So I want to make sure I am uh, doing them all the same. So right now I am at a 40 left going to 37 because I'm going to do a 40 by 35 adding that extra stitch. So 40 left, 37 right cast on every other stitch. So this makes the cast on easy. I'm actually using two different threads here because I'm mixing the colors together. Let me show you guys the cones of yarn. So these are the two cones of yarn that I'm going to be using. Um, they both are threaded up through the machine through separate wires and up here and these um, right here to let me know if the thread breaks, there's stoppers and there's a safety switch here also if a knot comes up. And that would automatically stop my motor once it's going so that it doesn't, um, you know, rip the yarn or anything like that. The key to this is getting both of these flat and together so that it's not creating any um, bulks or loops within my knitting. So we're going to start here. Simple slip knot. 
that's not so simple. We'll give a little bit more of a tail. Simple slip knot. Cast on every other stitch, leaving two on the outside. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. So I don't really have any music going right now. Usually I like to play some funky jams. I'm really into Parliament Funkadelic, Ohio Players. I just find old school 70s funk keeps me rocking and rolling. But I don't want to do any copyright violations by jamming out. Eventually, I'm going to see if these headphones will cancel out the noise, but that's for another day. So I'm going to bring my bunny ears down, put the, that yarn in that one, put this yarn in this one, and boom, I am casted on. So the next step I have is to grab my, uh, my comb here. Nice cast on comb. Is this one long enough? That one is not long enough. I'm going to need my OG. OG cast on comb. It's biggest one I have. All right. So this is a cast on comb. What the cast, com cast on comb does is it grabs all the loops and holds them down against the machine so that they don't pop off of the machine. Now, sometimes when you're knitting with a light yarn like I am here today, um, you could put a space bar in there that actually lifts the yarn up. But I'm going to use enough weight that I don't think that that's going to be an issue. I did just rearrange my whole sweatshop here, so everything is slightly not where it's supposed to be. But that is quite all right. I tend to move everything around in the sweatshop when I retool. Now I'm, uh, I moved my bulky machines forward because we're getting into the winter time and my standard machines back. All right, so now I am casted on, I'm weighted on, I have um, my, my weights holding my comb down. Always check your tension. Here, I'll even pull this off. So this is my machine knitting carriage for the 270. It's got lots of levers, levers and strings and springs and all kinds of jazz. So the needles actually run through here, creating the patterns and stuff like that. Uh, my tension dial is located right here. I'm going to be on tension 10 because I want the loosest. So one would be the tightest or zero would be the tightest. 10 is the loosest. <sighs> These are my cam buttons. These tell it what I want it to do as far as patterning goes. And then this is where the yarn runs through. So let me put this bad boy back on here. Do I have enough room? Do, do, do. Might have to scoot you back just a little bit to get this guy on here. Yep, I'm going to have to scoot you back just a little bit. Oh, bear with me. Eventually, I hope to get a camera that's not my laptop that I can actually stream on so that we don't have to go through all these adjustments. All right, so now I'm going to take my yarn and put it into the machine. And bada boom, bada bing. Oh, that is one row knitted. See how fast that was? All right, now make sure my comb is nice and loose. The uh, last stitch here tends to not want to knit, so I always kind of double check that, do it by hand. All right, so that is row number one, and that is where the um, curtain rod is going to weave in and out. So now I'm going to bring my comb here, pull all of my stitches forward, putting them in forward working position, which means every one of them will knit. Bam. And then I'm going to knit back the other way. So here, I'll let you guys take a look here real quickly. If you can see, let me see. Bam, bam, bam. So there is, you can see that it's latched onto all of the hooks all the way across. And then the next row will actually, oops, I, I put my thumb over the thing. The next row will actually knit that row that I just cast it on. So I'm going to do one more row. Now, in order to make it secure at the top where you're weaving it in, you don't want it all loosey-goosey, I'm going to input a pattern. Um, I prefer pattern 111. 
It's my favorite tuck stitch pattern. So I'm going to come over here to my cam. I'm going to be past the turnstile, turn it to KC, which stands for pattern knitting. I don't know. And it picks up, there's a timing uh, belt on the back of here. That timing belt's going to go through and it's going to select every other needle across my bed. Bada boom, bada bing. So every other needle is selected across the bed. Now I'm going to hit the tuck stitch button and I'm going to knit to six rows so that I'm ending at row 10. All right, so now I've knitted 10 rows. I have the holes for the curtain rod to go through and the base for it to hold onto. At this point, I always like to do a little bit of a gauge test just to make sure that I'm in the right zone. I'm looking for 24 inches and this is 26 inches, which I also know that it's stretched out right now. So when you pull it off the machine, you always lose an inch or two once it um, compresses down and lengthens out. So I'm going to write all that down, every other cast on, knit one, pattern one, 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 row four through ten. All right, now I'm going to undo the um, pattern knitting and go to plain knitting. So I'm going to say plain knit one row, and I'm going to knit across. This puts all of my needles back in um, working position, which means they're in standby, waiting for me to input my next pattern. On uh, my next pattern, I do want the top of these curtains to be a little bit lacy. So I'm going to go to my tuck stitches here. And this is the lovely pattern book. It's got all of the patterns that are located in the 270. That does a lot of really cool stuff. Um, so I want the top to let the light in just a little bit here. And I wanted to show you an open tuck stitch. So I'm going to go with pattern 131. So I'm going to go ahead and program that in. Now with the open tuck stitches, so this is the pattern that I'm going to be using. Pattern 131. I think that'll look really pretty. It'll give nice stripes and there'll be enough light coming through on the insides of this. So with open tuck stitches, you have to go to the back of the book here and it has everything in your graph showing you what needles are selected and what needles are not selected. So I'm going to find pattern 131 and there it is right there. So as you can see, I have to remove two needles, which means I have to transfer them from um, one needle over to the next, creating that gap and then pulling that needle back into non-working position. So this always starts at dead center. All right, so we are going to have three forward and one back, starting from the middle. So if this is dead center, that means these three are there. This one is coming out and this one's coming out. Now, some of them are a lot more complicated than this. So I'm just going to start with these easy guys. And hopefully I get it right the first time because it's been a long time since I've done this. So I'm going to go ahead and put three needles back, one needle forward, all the way across my bed here. And that's three back, one forward, three back, one forward. All right, now going to the other side, I'm going to have three back, one forward, three back, one forward, three steps back and get one step forward. I wish it was the other way. It should be three steps forward and one step back because you get ahead that way. Yes, I do make up random songs about stuff. That's just how I'm going to keep myself entertained and hopefully you too. All right, so now I'm going to use my eyelet transfer tool. So I'm going to basically all of these ones that I picked up and pulled out, I'm going to transfer them onto the stitch next to them. All right, so that's one, two. Generally, I like to on 
the right side of zero, push everything to the right. And then on the left side of the zero, push everything to the left. It doesn't make that much of a difference, but you will see it in that first row. All right. So these curtains were purchased for me, for, uh, from me, from my good friends, Adam and Angie. They live in Tennessee. I wanted to go on our family canoe trip. So they were like, hey, I'll trade you a ticket to canoe trip for some sweet curtains for our house. And I was like, oh yeah, that sounds like a great deal. So it's taken me a little while to get to it, but here we are. All right, transferring the needles. Oh, now I'm on the other side, so now I'm gonna to transfer to the left instead of the right. Transferring to the left. Transferring to the left. Now the reason I like picking um, patterns that have holes in that, like the lacier patterns that are vertical on the curtains, because it just tends to let them drape and flow in more of a curtain mode. And I found anything that I have going vertical on curtains just doesn't really look the same. So hopefully this is correct. So I'm going to transfer all of these. All right, everything is back. Again, I'm going to put this into KC. Pick up my timing belt. and run it across. I will find out very soon if I did this wrong because it would all fall off the edge. It did not, but that does not look correct either. Well, no, we'll see what happens. We're on an adventure, me and you, we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna hit my tuck stitch cams and knit across. If it starts bubbling up and getting all crazy, I know I missed, I missed something. Oh, it's bubbling up and getting all crazy. So I miscalculated something somewhere. But that's okay, that's part of pattern knitting. Like I said, I have not done the open tuck stitch in a very long time. Now you get to see a new technique that I call ripping it out. So basically, because I screwed that up, we're gonna go back and start over. I'm gonna push all that back in. I know I was at row 10. So basically I'm just gonna come here and I'm gonna rip out all the stitches that I just did which was only four. Then I'm probably gonna have to retransfer all of those back on and figure out, I was probably just off by one. These books are from the early eight, uh, from the early eighties and it is a Japanese knitting machine. So um, translating some of the instructions I have found has been um, Interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Now, since I'm using two yarns here, ripping out generally, I just pull it back. But I have to also worry about keeping these two yarns separated from each other and not getting them all tied up together. So I put one on one side of the machine. Set that down. And the other on the other side of the machine. And then pull them back down to their respective sides. Otherwise, they're gonna start to bind to each other and twist up and that makes for a mess. So I'm gonna keep ripping these out and you wanna make sure that you turn your dial back every time you rip out a row. Um, I know exactly how many rows I just did, so I'm just gonna rip it out and then turn Turn back time to the original row that I was on. A lot of this is trial and error. I am self-taught on these machines, but I figure if you have a if you have a manual, then you can figure out anything you need to know. Which it looks like I might have to go back and read the book on this one. There are easier tuck stitch ones that I could have just flowed with you, but I figured. 
why not try something new live? And you guys can see the actual process instead of me just like, oh, look at how easy this is. I get it right every single time. Because I'm here to tell you, I don't get it right every single time. But that is quite all right. And here we go. So now I am back to the row where I transferred the stitches incorrectly, which means I have to retransfer them all back on read the instructions again and transfer them correctly this time. Hopefully nailing it. So um, as you probably guessed by the name, I am broadcasting from uh, Detroit, Michigan. I am on the east side of Detroit. Um, I was born here, but I spent a lot of my time all around the United States. I've lived in many places and actually Arkansas, was where I learned how to crochet when I was a young girl. And I've been in love with yarn ever since. It's always kind of been an outlet for me. I've always wanted to um, make a living doing textiles, but I never could figure out how to do it because it's so time consuming. That's when I discovered uh, these knitting machines. They were manufactured in the early 80s and um, haven't been manufactured since. I'm not exactly positive why, because they're awesome. And since then, I started off with this knitting machine was my first knitting machine, actually. Um, Grease Lightning, because it moves so fast. And from there, I have had a lot of people donate machines to me. And I have enough to start a small factory. The great thing about this um, knitting by machine is it is a trainable skill. And being from Michigan, everybody is always looking for jobs. So this is a trainable skill. It is the same technique used across the board. So I'm hoping one day I can get some other people in here that enjoy yarn as much as I do and are willing to learn these techniques that I've developed. And um, perhaps one day I can have Somebody in here making armies and somebody else making leg warmers and, you know, somebody else sewing labels and we can have ourselves a funky little sweatshop. I know sweatshop has a negative connotation. I use it because it's fun and it gets hot in here. Okay. So now I'm taking all of the needles, all of the stitches that I transferred, and I am moving them back to their original home. Get back to where you once belong. So these guys are going to go home. And I am going to try to figure out where I screwed up. I have learned along the lines that sometimes it's just better to scrap it and start over. I've sat here and sat here for an hour trying to rectify a mistake where I could have just ripped it off and... Um, started a new one but in this case it was much easier just to do it this way instead of re-knitting that whole cast on but that's any artist will tell you sometimes you just got to walk away and other times you got to work to save it it just depends on the piece and i've always been told anything worth having is worth fighting for so we are going to go ahead and get these guys back to where they once belonged. All right, see, that did not, oh, hey, don't you be giving me no hard times. All right. Now I am back. I'm going to go ahead and put my row counter back at 10 because that's where I was. Actually, I was at... Because this is cast on. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So, yep, that's 10. I'm at 10. 11. Because I'm on that side of the thing. So, I knitted my cast on stitch doesn't count. So, the next one is the every other, every other stitch. And then I closed it. And then I knit one stitch. So, and then I put in input my pattern that takes me to four. And then I knitted six rows which takes me to 10 of 111, and then I knitted one plain row across, bringing me to 
11. All right, so I am going to um, pause for the cause here because I have to find my instruction manual. But I'll be right back in about five minutes. It. Yay! Okay, so this is the instruction manual for the um, Brother 270. And I am looking to do an open tuck stitch. Pattern knitting. Open tuck stitch pattern, page 72. So, where did I mess up? Maybe I moved them too early. Uh, I'm going to set the end needle selection mechanism to off. I always forget that one. So, on the carriage, there are these two little screws. Are they already on the off position? Oh, they are on the off position. Okay, so these little screws, sometimes you have to turn them into the upright position. Sometimes you turn them into the outright position. This either leaves your end needle selected or unselected, depending on the pattern, because you don't want to have a selected needle on the end. All right, so that has been accomplished. Hang your claw weights, program your pattern, input your pattern, then transfer your needles. <laughs> So close yet so far, right? All right, so step clear. One, three, one, step, step, ready. Round two. I gotta pick up my timing belt, put my yarn back in, make sure everybody is in working position. There is my needle selection. All right, so transfer the stitch mark with a zero in the diagram in the pattern book to the adjacent needle. Bring back the empty needle to a position. Pattern starts in between the two centers. So I'm gonna go back to this book here. Again, I really feel as long as you have an instruction manual, you can do anything. This is what we did before YouTube University. One thirty-one. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. So, there should be two. All right, so if this is one, two, three, that's one, two, three. So this needle is gonna come out. Now, if this is one, one, out. Is that not what I did before? 
do, 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 transfer the stitch mark with the O in the diagram and the pattern back to the adjacent needle. Bring back the empty needle to A position. Set to move the carriage from left to right across the turn mark. Start your pattern knitting. Thought that's what I did, but we shall see it. If you don't succeed, just try, try again. That's gonna go there, and that is gonna go there. So then this is one, two, three. Wouldn't it be the same on each? No, it's not. One, two, three, and back. Aha! Sneaky, sneaky. One, two, three, and back. 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 So that one I'm not going to do on the last. So this is definitely a different pattern than what I had before. One, two, three, and back. Oops, don't drop it. And especially having two yarns, you want to make sure you pick them both up. One, two, three, and back. Dennis, don't think about eating my instruction manual, you little bunny. Hey. <laughs> One, two, three, and back. Sorry if this is boring for you guys. I figure live streaming, you're just going to hang out with me so that I'm not in the sweatshop all by myself all the time. One, two. Three and back. One, two, three, 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 and back. All right, now I'm going to pull one, two, three, and back. This one is going to go. Bam. I'm going to pull all these guys forward. One, two, three, and back. One, two, three. That one sometimes somehow has four, so that's why it's off. There you go. Get on there. You get on here. And you get on here. This one has four, too. I might just have to do a easier pattern because this is stressing me out a little bit too much. Do I not know how to count? Because I skipped the selected needles. You know what? Who needs an open tuck stitch pattern anyways? Again, part of being an artist, know your limitations. Don't start off on the hardest thing that you haven't done in six months just to show you can. Because obviously, Christina, you can't today. So I'm going to pull all these back. I'm going to pick a different pattern. And we're going to rock and roll so you can actually see how this machine works. Instead of me here trying to show off and looking like a dummy butt. Because that is what is happening right now. So I'm going to put all these bad boys back where they belong. And this is the process, people. That's why I have what I lovingly call dead hooker storage, because there's a lot of things that I try, and they just don't work. And they go into the dead hooker storage, and then from there, 
Some people like to take them and use them for patches. My cousin likes to take scraps that I make and turn them into coats and all kinds of other fun stuff and purses. So it's all a process. And I guess that's what live streaming is for, is figuring out the process. So, we're going to go a little less fancy because now I feel on the spot. And I'm just going to do one that I really like. And it is simple. And we can get to rocking and rolling. Because there's like five more steps to making these bad boys that I want to show you. All right. Everybody is back. Dog and the rabbit are having fun chasing each other around. Get back. The other thing is you got to make sure not to get the um, yarn stuck on these gate pegs. Because that will mess you up big time. All right. I am back to zero. I'm actually at row 12 at this point. All right. Everybody good. Everybody separated. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to rip out row 12, go back to row 11, pick a different pattern, and let the machine do the work and less math for me. It is a good quality to know when to stop and just do something else. And... As you can see, I rip out a lot because I'm really, really good at that. Take these, keep them separated, and pull them back down. All right. Don't give me no flack, Jack. All right. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yay! It's Christmas. There we go. Everybody back in regular working position. We are at 11. Take this bad boy off. Bring it on down over here. Reattach the carriage. Step. Clear. Bye-bye, pattern 131. We will test you out another day when I can do it off camera and then try it on camera. So we are going to go with uh, 110, 105. Look at 105. It's the exact same pattern, just less work. 105, step, step. Pick up my timing bar. Put my yarn back into the feeder. Needle selection. Tuck stitch. And one. Two. Looks like I dropped somebody over here. So that is an issue. I'm going to pick her up. Drop stitches will kill your work. And anytime you are working, taking needles on and off, always, oh, there she is. I see her. Ha ha. You cannot escape me. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to hang that there so that I have it trapped. Where's my latch hook? Latch hook's on the other machine. Bada boom, bada bing, latch hook. And I'm going to pick this baby up. That was my toe. Great first video, huh, guys? Let me just uh, make some mistakes. That's all right. They're just happy little trees, right? So I'm going to get that over this. Get on there. This did fall into the pattern knitting, so I have to re knit the pattern as well. And there she is. I got you. 
I got you, boo. Get up in here. Alrighty. And I got you. And I got you. And I got you. And now. So basically, I'm just taking this hook, picking up these stitches. Um, get on there. And um, knitting it from the back side. Because I have the um, the pearl side facing me. So in order for it to match the pattern, for in order for it to match the pattern, I have to knit it from the back side of the machine. So I'm going to pull that there. And then I'm going to double check. Three out, one back, three out, one back, three out out one back three out one back matching the pattern oh i picked that bad boy right up Now, a lot of people ask me about the um, KE100 motor arm here. And they're like, isn't that automation? Blah, blah, blah. The fact of the matter is, I would have to sit here and just go like this for about 250 rows. So what the brother KE100 does, it's a motor arm. All the manual labor, as you can see, all the casting on, all the picking up, all the actual stuff that I do on the machine, I do with my hands. The only thing the motor arm does is literally move the shuttle from one end to the other. So that opens me up so that I can start on other projects, do other things. I'm usually steaming or knitting on another machine while that's happening. So for this, I'm going to go ahead. I have 30 rows. And the first 10, I know, are um, a different pattern. So I'm going to measure out these, and I know it's 20 rows. So 20 rows equals about three stitch, three inches. It's also going to shrink down, so I'm going to say it's going to be about two and a half inches. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and knit to 70. So five, six, seven, I'm going to set, there are these um, row counters here. So this sets how many rows it's going to go before it stops. You also have these things here that'll stop it if the yarn breaks and these drop. There's also a lever here that'll stop it if a knot comes up. Um, these here determine how wide it's going to go. So I'm going to start off at an eight, row 70, crank that bad boy on. This would be blinking if it was not working. It'd be like, meh, 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 but everything is in shape right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put this onto here. So this metal attachment is something that I added onto this carriage that allows it to attach to the machine. And rock and roll! Ah, this is how we knit in Detroit. Hold on. I saw Boo Boo can't rock and roll until you actually know you're rocking and rolling here. I'm going to do that. Yep, there we go. There we go. Oh, that's why. Drop that weight on my toe and I forgot about it. Hey, oh, there we go. All right. I'm going to go to eight and a half just to give it a little extra room. Now we're rock and roll, yeah, people in style, do, 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 do. knitting and knitting, you want to see what we're knitting? Look at how pretty that is. So we have patterning in there, and it's, she's just going to go back and forth, back and forth, and then when I get to row 100, I'll do some measuring again, and make sure, whoop, we fell off. Uh-oh, there's always something. 
We be jamming. Jamming. Wow, you guys are going to get the full sweatshop experience here today. Now, sometimes you get a little wiggle around. Oh. Are we wrapped? Uh, all right, we be jamming. Not everything works out super great. Oh, yep, I see what happened here. So the yarn got caught up on the backside of the gate peg. So I might have to go over here. I got to lift this up up there. And that's something I can fix in post since we caught it close enough. What I do is I just pull it in back into position prior to steaming it. And then steam it in where it needs to go and be like, that's your house. Go to your home. Are you too good for your home yarn? All right. That looks good. That looks good. That doesn't look good. Pick it up. There we go. 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 Are all selected on this one? Yeah, this looks like a row that's all selected. Here we go. Now, let's pray to the yarn gods. Oh, I sure probably shouldn't talk with that in my mouth. Let's pray to the yarn gods. I can just knit this across since it was at the beginning. Otherwise, I have to rip out the row. Mm. Pick up. Pick it up. Pick it up. No, nope, it's not going to do it. What are you doing? That was a close one. So um, generally speaking, when something like that happens, I have to rip everything out. And But you guys already saw that. So um, the yarn gods were like, you've already demonstrated how to rip everything out and start over. We're not going to make you do that again. Thanks, yarn gods. Now I'm going to just go ahead and put a little extra weight on these end ones here just to make sure that we don't get no pop-off situations like that again. So now I'm at row 56. So that would take me down to there. So it's at four. Uh, boom. Give it a little extra. Oops, too much weight. All right. So now we're uh, back on track. We are knitting. There's Emma Gemma. I'm going to go ahead and um, get some other stuff set up. And I also want to see if you can actually still hear me with the knitting machines going. So this is Christina Larson with Happy Hookers Detroit. I will um, continue this process throughout the day. And I will live stream the whole thing from, you know, cone to steam. All right. I'll see you guys in a little while. Thank you for watching. Check out my Patreon page. Bye.